undeserving family in each and every other 50 states. This week, we're in Hawaii! And the renovation starts right now! Michael, Polly, Ed, Eduardo, and Paige. Check it out. We're in Honolulu, Hawaii. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, this is the farthest we've ever traveled to help out a family. But I tell you what, man, this family is worth it. This is the Akana family, and they live here in Honolulu in paradise. But they see a side of life that isn't so fortunate. Now, this is really an expensive place to live, and a lot of families struggle just to make ends meet. Well, the Akana family go out of their way to help out those families who struggle, and now, they need help themselves. Take a look at this, and you'll see why we're here. Hi, Hi, I'm Ben. Hi, I'm Momi. Hi, I'm Kiao. Here, I'm 14. Hi, I'm Kulu. I'm 12. Hi, I'm Mako. I'm Welcome to Honolulu. So, 11 years ago, Momi Akana had it pretty tough. She was a single mom raising three kids on welfare. The day I realized I had to go on welfare was my birthday. Had a college degree, and I had to do it because I needed the food stamps and I needed the financial. I had never been on welfare. No one in my family had ever been on welfare. It was, I was gonna be the first one. In 1996, Momi created Keiki Okayana, or COCA, a nonprofit group that helps out poor families. And for a long time, Momi ran that group out of her house. My name's Kanoi Naone, and I work for Kekioka Aina Family Learning Centers. Momi, she's so humble. She never wants anything for herself. She was a single mom, and she didn't have any money, and she was on welfare. And she would hand out all of the donations to everybody else. She refused to take anything for herself, and it's still like that. It's just such a blessing to be able to work for the people that are in the same circumstances I was. It's about the most satisfying work you could ever hope to have the privilege to be able to do. And guys, you're never gonna believe this, but over the years, COCA has managed to help 9,000 families all over Hawaii. Most of our funding comes from the Native Hawaiian Education Program. We currently operate in over 40 different communities on Oahu and Maui, including churches, the correctional centers, both the men's and women's prisons, wherever we're invited in from the community. My name is Chaplain Bonnie Holcomb, and I'm the facility chaplain at the Women's Community Correctional Center. To the women in prison, there's a huge lack there of parenting skills. Momi has taught the classes in the prison. Uh, it bonds the mother and the child. That's just huge. It is our, our heartbeat because they're, they are important. They can change their lives, can be different. Keiki Oka'aina and Momi saved my life. I always say that. And she has been a mentor, a friend. I, I couldn't have done it without her. Momi just got a grant to move COCA headquarters from her house to these empty buildings on this huge piece of land. But here's the problem. These buildings are totally unsafe. We were so blessed that the state made it possible for us to um, acquire the property, but we really need roofs that don't leak, doors that can lock, and plumbing that actually works, and electricity that it doesn't blink off and on. There's just so much work that needs to be done up there. Momi's own house isn't doing much better. The house is right next to a river, and a major flood washed away more than half of the home's foundation. And Momi's afraid that the house will just give way in the middle of the night. Our house, it's being held up by pillars, and it was kind of freaky when the bottom of the house fell in, because it was like, whoa, that totally could have knocked out our entire house. The floor is really starting to settle, and this is the part that extends out into the river. So what's happened now is that the tile is cracked all the way across to um, the kitchen, to the point where none of these doors work anymore. In fact, in order to go in and out of this door, my son has to climb through his bedroom window. Okay, some more. Voila. So guys, here's the deal. Last year, Momi married Ben, who's an awesome guy. We met each other in December of 2005, 
and it was a blind date, really. But becoming a father and the head of a household uh, after being a bachelor for so long, it's been a great um, challenge and a lot of fun, actually. And now, well, together, they've had a baby girl named Polly, who was actually born with Down syndrome. And they're all living in this house that could be washed away any minute. ABC, please come and help. We really need you folks. There's no possible way we're going to be able to finish any of the work that we started here. It's got to be something bigger than us. We really need you. Amazing. What do you say? Let's go wake him up. Right. Bring it in here, people. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. Well, then let's do it. Woo. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Good morning, Akana family. Mommy, Ben, Kay. So, Mom, come here. How are you? So you okay? Good. Oh, my God. This week is about rewarding a family that has done so much for their own community. They have experienced bad times, and Momi, as a single mom, turned her situation around. She used that situation to help so many families. Momi is the kind of woman that I think we all strive to be. You've helped out like 9,000 families, right? Oh. Probably more than that. Yeah, a lot. A lot. A lot. Well, this week, we're going to help you guys out, all right? God, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you guys what's going to happen. First of all, we're going to do the best to get you guys in a better house, OK? The good news is, you guys don't even have to be here to go through lifting all the heavy stuff. You guys are going on vacation. <laughs> guys, how does Whistler Canada say? Oh, oh, my God! You're going to see snow! The other good news is, we're not only uh, helping you guys out, we're building a community center. Oh, my God, you're here! That's right. So we're going to help you help all those other families. How do you feel about that? Thank you. I know. When Ty told me he was going to build the community center, I was so happy. I wouldn't let him go. The biggest thing for me is I'll be able to help more people. So really, more than anything, that's what I wanted. So Kana family, Woo! show me the house. Hawaii is one of the most expensive places to live in the world. You know, just trying to raise a family uh, can be one of the most difficult things, you know, to do. Now, the one thing that's really cool about Momi is she's aware of that. In fact, she went through those same struggles. So she's really helped so many people at the same time struggling herself. And um, I think that's one of the reasons why she's so deserving. Oh, my gosh. So you're on the river. We're, we're actually hanging over the river. This is the only house. They got a variance to build here because the people who built it yeah. ran away during the last big hurricane without finishing it. If you look over here, you can see where the house is starting to settle down and the foundation is kind of just settling. The house is cracking because the foundation, it's slanted, which is making the house lean, and eventually, it's just going to fall into the river. I mean, it's nice that they have a view, but the view is of the river that is, like, possibly going to wash away their house and their kids. That's not much of a view, if you think about it. OK, so this is the bathroom. This is the bathroom? Yeah. Okay. How's the plumbing situation in the house? Well, the shower runs really slow. That's that's the water that's, pressure? See, it's coming. There you go. That's it. <laughs> this is the um, master bedroom. There's no closets in here. There is no room. I mean, how do you even get over there? You climb across the bed. We took a tour of the house and saw the conditions that they're living in, and my god, you know. This is a woman who wakes up every day and helps so many other families, and she's never really had any help with hers. It's tough, and it makes you realize they need help. Dude, you're so clean. <laughs> Tell me what you would want to do ideally to your room. 
Well, I, I really like music. I, uh, I see you got yeah, a guitar. My guitar. And, and what are these? Uh, that's a, an ukulele. Ukulele? You know yeah. how to play it? Yeah, kind play, of. Play a little bit. Kahi is a very mature 14-year-old. He's the oldest son, loves music. He's very creative. I feel that he really deserves an environment that will continue to not only inspire him, but educate him to be the musician that he really wants to be. Oh, right there, right there. That sounded good. All right, let's try it one yeah. more time. Okay, 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 one more time. This is my bedroom. And where's um your bed? I didn't have a pump for my bed, so I had to blow it up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> But you have lots of kitties. Yeah, I, I love animals. Ever since I was five, I've always wanted to be a vet. A veterinarian. Wow. Yeah. This week, I just want to make sure that Kuule has the best room possible for her. She loves animals. She loves pink. So I'm going to bring that all into her room. It's so cool, man. Look at how smooth this backside is. That's lava rock, too? Yeah, I crunched it out. Wow, very cool. Volcanoes is your big thing, huh? Yep. Maka loves volcanoes, and it's very cool because here we are sitting on islands that, that are formed by volcanoes. So one of the things this week I want to do is concentrate on what he loves. And if it's a volcano, well, then that, that's going to be my love for the week, too. What's that there? Um, baking soda. And this is vinegar dyed in red. There we go. There we go. And, oh, and this actually almost is the color of lava, isn't it? Sometimes. It smells like a salad, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> so, oh. bedroom, obviously. Yeah. Well, right now, Maka sleeps here on the bunk bed there in the corner. We had plans to uh, treat this as uh, Polly's nursery one day. Well, she seems to be doing her okay. coming. She looks very healthy, man. Oh, she's gosh. very big and she's got the rolls of chunks. Oh, My yeah, wife. she's got the rolls going. My That's wife would sure. love those rolls of chunks. How are you doing? You've become like an instant dad. Well, no, uh, it's been uh, an experience, a real experience for me, but uh, something I treasure. When I look at Ben, and I look at little Polly, he doesn't care. It's his daughter. There is, there's, there is no Down syndrome. He's so proud to be a dad, and you can just see it in his eyes. So it's a no-brainer. I'm going to do a nursery, and I'm going to build something very special for Momi and Polly, but more for dad and Polly. Oh, whoa. OK, Are now hold on me? to the side of the house, hold OK? On, so is, there's no, like, a rail to hold on to? No, there's no rail. And they slant downwards, and it's slippery, so watch right, you out. You want a hand? OK. All righty. So this is what fell into the river, all the way up to this here. Water was all the way up here. It goes all the way up to the grassy area up there. It was unbelievable. It would look like a big cavity was dug out. It was a huge hole. And if that happens on this side, there's nowhere for it to go but to take these walls with it, because it's that close. That means your house is going to tumble into the river. Yeah. That's not a good thing. Most people think living next to a river is awesome. But when you have a rainy season and it rains for eight, nine, 10 days straight, what used to be a little creek turns into a raging muddy river that will wash your house away. And so it may seem beautiful, but it can be deadly. I've been looking around here. This house, right now the foundation could be washed away again if the river rises, which it's going to do in the rainy season. And so honestly, we can't build in this situation. We've never been in this situation. And the Akana family, I'm afraid, they're going to have to move, hopefully to higher ground. Coming up next. Are you ready to build a This week, it could be the most difficult build we ever do because we're talking about a house in a community center, and we might not make our deadline. In order for us to keep on time, anything you can do to rally a few more of the locals would be great. We have drained all of our resources. So for the first time, it looks like we are not going to finish in seven days. This week is about rewarding a family that has done so much for their own community. The thought of what this is going to mean to so many people. I could never have dreamed this. OK, so what I'm trying to do is check out their house and really get inspiration for the new house. And uh, I'll tell you what, when I look around, we got our work cut out for us. The Akana family is young, and they're bright and vibrant. 
And then the house, it is dreary and it's literally falling apart. This house doesn't suit this family. It needs to be cheery, bright, a beautiful sort of upcountry plantation style home. This is traditional Hawaiian. This is what they use in, in the hula shows. It's pretty awesome that you found a location that could be so close to your house. We were blessed to get this place. It's three beautiful acres. Three acres? Three acres. That's a lot in Hawaii. After I let Mommy know that, we were definitely going to help her build a new community center. We walked up the street, and you know, she finally showed me the land. I realized there's a lot of room here. Could be, um, could build a few things. We have a, an office in this one. We have about six girls who work in this office, and then we have about 35 from the community who rotate in and out of here. What is, why does this look like it's an old cooler? It's a walk-in freezer. I see these buildings, and you know, they've been around forever, and they, they just don't work. I mean, you've got, you've got holes in the, the tin roof of this one that's literally raining down on all the electrical that's shorting out all the power, and you know, you've got wiring issues, you've got structural issues, Basically, this thing is a disaster. You know what? The buildings, I'll be honest with you, are in horrible shape. They're in really bad shape. But the view is incredible. It's beautiful. This community center is her passion. Right now, it's just an empty lot with three empty buildings and a lot of hope and dreams. But she can see what it could be and how many people it could touch. You know, when you look around where we're at, you know, we're in, in paradise. Most of us just think of this as everyone's on a permanent vacation. But the truth is, that's not the way it really is, is it? No, it's not. And we work with lots of children. Um, their parents are in prison. And boy, you're dealing with families that are dealing with drugs, um, welfare, just multiple stressors in their lives. And oh my gosh, you just want to love them up. What, what drives you to do that? Well, 11 years ago, my kids were going to a wonderful free program. And then they closed. And so I thought, maybe I could try to keep it going. So two months later, I reopened it with about 30 families. And we started there. I used to pay for the snacks and stuff that we'd, do, that we'd have with my food stamps and um, just sort of kept it going. You're on welfare. Yeah. You got three kids. And you're spending the only money that you do have on snacks. Why did you do that? I love those people. They're still with me today. They still work with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. One of my biggest lessons was um, you can't ever judge where someone's at in their life. Because, uh, you know, you see people on welfare and you think, oh, gosh, are you not working? And I just want to tell women out there or men or if they're going through a hard time that there's hope. And so you just really know, don't judge people. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know. And everybody has something that they're going through. I'm just overwhelmed with um, what this means, what this will mean for the future for us. I really want to tell you that we're going to dedicate ourselves to being good stewards of everything that's given to us and making sure we use it to service everyone we can the best that we can. Are you ready? <laughs> what do you say we get you and your family on vacation? Yeah. Come here. <laughs> okay. I think most people don't realize that even though you can be in paradise, it's a struggle, you know, and people are on welfare, people are on food stamps, and that's the reality, man, you know. If she could help, you know, 9,000 people, imagine what she could do with a real community center that really brings families together, the kind of difference she can make. That is her gift to so many people in Hawaii, and we're going to give her the gift to be able to continue to do it. Have fun! Aloha! I didn't want to mention this while the family was here, but took a look at the house down by the river. 
there's no way that not only can we try and yeah. renovate that house or build in that same spot, because either way, it is going to get washed yeah. away. It's a full-flowing right. room. Yeah. Yeah. So here's very what strong. I'm thinking. Anyway. Take a look around. Look at all this land right here. This is amazing. Beautiful. This yeah. is so what beautiful. do you say we build a house for the Akana family right here, and then right next door, the Coca Community Center? Oh, oh my God. That's awesome. Who's in? I'm in. I'm in. All right. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. Bring it in here, people. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, then let do it! Woo! Let's get busy. We got a lot to do. Okay, so we're in Hawaii, and we're trying to do two builds, a house and a community center, which means we're going to need lots of help. Cool thing is, people are flying in from all over the islands, all over the place, just to be here to help us with the Akana family, and they're showing up right now as we speak. This week could be the most difficult build we ever do because you're on the Hawaiian Islands, which is in the middle of nowhere. So um, we've kind of got our biggest challenge, especially with limited labor, limited resources. And I think what this is going to come down to is heart and pride, what that Aloha spirit really is. But um, my guess is, is these guys have got, got what it takes. Follow me, people. We've got even more people to pick up. things a little bit differently this week. Normally, we just demolish the family's house, but where it's at, it's hanging over the river. I mean, it wouldn't be safe for us to rebuild there. So we're moving things up the road. We're demolishing the community center to make room for a new community center and a new house for the economies. The design team, I'd like to meet the builders going to be helping us out. This is Jeff Proster with Brookfield Homes. You want to say anything to the crew before we get oh, this Oh, man, started? we are excited. On behalf of Brookfield Homes Hawaii, I want to say aloha to you, Ty, and the design team. The uh, Hokana family is very special. They have done a lot for this community, many times giving up their own needs for needs of others. And I think what's going to happen is we will create this community center that will be shared and enjoyed by thousands for decades to come. We're going to do it with passion, with care, and with love. So let's make it happen. OK. This is going to be an awesome week. And I think it's going to mean a lot uh, to this family. So what do you guys say? Should we let them know what we're about to do and say hi? Yeah. yeah. Hello, Akana family, or uh, as you say here, aloha. Hey, hey, guys. Hi. guys, I hope you're having a fantastic time on vacation. Well, today's a really big day, and uh, we're about to make some really big changes around here. And to do that, we've got a lot of help, and they'd like to say hi. Say hi, everybody. Yeah. Hey. Look at those people. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. The cool thing is, we're not just building one home here. We're building two things. We're building a house for your family and then a community center so you can help all kinds of families in Hawaii. I know that uh, in the Hawaiian tradition, we also kind of need to give it a blessing. So it's Kahu, right? Yes, sir. Kahu is here, and uh, he's going to give a blessing in Hawaiian. What we are going to do is I'm just going to be asking a blessing, and I would like you to join your hearts and your spirit. And we are going to be praying to God to ask for his blessing. We call him Keokua. And then immediately following, we're going to have Jeff and Paul use the o'o to dig here as symbolic of the project starting. As a sign of solidarity, will you please hold the hands next to you? Let us pray. In Hawaii, we believe that we are part of the land, that the land is with us. and. To be able to have Kahu come in and bless the land before we started construction for us was the way to really do what was pono or right. O kainoa, o kamakua, a o kikeiki, a meka o hane hemolele. Amen. Please, o'os. 
What better way to start this build than with the OO sticks, which is a part of the Hawaiian culture, and the fact that this stick did so many things. It was a tool, it was a weapon, and to turn that soil into, it's, it's a great way to begin. So family, now we've actually broken ground. So what do you say, people? Are you ready to build a house? so hilarious. It was so cool watching them knock down everything and then like, smashing all the buildings. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's coming down fast! Well, come on, family. As you can see, we're already making progress. Now, these buildings behind me have been demolished, and we're making room for a new community center that's gonna be so much better and make it so much easier on you, Mommy. Now, check this out. We're also doing something over here. Now, this is gonna be the Akana family house. We're actually moving you guys to higher ground and away from the river so you don't have to worry about your family being washed away at night. When I found that I was gonna be so close to work, it was the most incredible surprise because uh, I love my work and I love what I do. So bye, guys. We'll see you soon. If you or someone you know deserves a home makeover, go to abc.com keyword home makeover to apply to be on the show. I'm gonna let those guys know we can do it, okay? All right, man, thank you, take care. It's the morning of day three, and I'm on the second floor of the Okana's 3,500 square foot home. But as impressive as that is, this is even more impressive. Look at this. Look at the scope of this land. You've got 3,800 square foot community center going in over there. And then look at all of these people. They've come together from every other island. I mean, and resources are limited here. We're six hours from the mainland. But these guys are pulling together to make it happen. It's incredible. You know that we're all worried. It's a big build, biggest we've ever done. And anytime you see Jeff, he's, he's kind of got this brave face, you know, that, that yes, we're gonna get it done and, and it's no problem. And he's leading the charge, not sleeping and not stopping till it gets done. And I'm in Maka's room here, and Maka's room is gonna be all about volcanoes, just as Hawaii is. Right here, big volcano, lava flow coming down to a nightstand over there. He'll actually sleep inside the volcano. It'll be very cool. This is Keiki's room. This is where I'm going to give him a perfect space so that he can be inspired with his music. That's what he wants to be. He wants to be a musician. He's into music technology. So this is going to be a really beautiful space. Not only that, check out this view. Who's not going to be able to write beautiful music to that? It's always like Christmas morning when we get a delivery of lumber for me. All this stuff is for projects. I don't know where it's used for. All I know is what this stuff is for. And this is the teak that is going to be used to build the rocker. After seeing Dad holding his little daughter, it was very obvious that I wanted to build these two people, especially a rocker chair. If you are a dad like me, it's nice to be able to rock away, and that movement usually puts the baby to sleep, or it can put some dads to sleep, and I'm one of those dads. Usually my wife has to come in and give me a nudge and wake up, you're sleeping. No, I'm not, I'm just resting my eyes, honey. So I'm, uh, I'm looking for some inspiration for the staircase. Traditionally in Hawaii, you uh, see cut out panels of uh, different leaves like this. This is awesome here. That right there is a monstera leaf. It's local to Hawaii. You see it a lot in the floral arrangements. I'm gonna take this, make a pattern, we'll cut it out, insert it into the railing of the staircase. Okay, so Keiki Okayana, literally translates children of the land. Now that has inspired 
Momi to help out so many families here in Hawaii. Well, I've looked to the land for the inspiration, and I think I found it. It's as simple as something like this. So my special project this week really is Momi and Ben's master bedroom. Now, Momi is a very special woman who who does so much for so many people, and she inspires me, and I take my inspiration from just that, the land. I think it's gonna be as beautiful as her and this island. I, uh, I cannot wait. It's gonna be awesome. Mm. Hello? Hello, Wakana family. Hey, how you doing? It's Ty. How's it going? Hi, Ty. Hey. Oh, my God. All right, hey, listen, Ty. so this is the part of your vacation where the action is about to come in. What's going to happen? You're going whitewater rafting. We're going to go whitewater rafting. Oh, awesome. Does that sound good? Awesome. Well, first off, you're about to take a helicopter ride to a glacier. Get off the phone and get on the chopper and start enjoying the action part of your vacation. OK. Talk to you guys soon. Okay, have fun. Bye, Ty. See Bye, Ty. Bye. Bye. That is going to be awesome. We were taken on a helicopter ride up to a glacier. And this was where the kids had their first taste of playing in the snow. And they went crazy. We threw snow walls at each other. Uh, we made snow angels. It was really cool though. I, I always thought like a snowflake was kind of big, but I, I didn't realize it was kind of small. <laughs> it's like a little raindrop. I think every mom wants to be able to show their children that it's okay to just have fun and, and just let go and not have to be so concerned with what's going on back home and taking care of everybody else. It's been a long time since I was leading the charge to have fun. That was really wonderful. Oh my God! <laughs> 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 New front porch, and right over there, that's the community center. We are building over 7,000 square feet at the same time to make Momi's dreams come true. This is a huge build. Our framers, who kill themselves and work so hard, the minute they're done, we need to take them to go over to the community center and start working there. It's an incredible amount of work, and uh, we need all the help we can get. So the decking we're using for this house is eco-friendly. It's actually made out of 50% plastic and 50% wood, all recycled. So it's not only going to look great, but it's actually going to keep the environment healthy, and that's really important to the people of Hawaii. OK, guys, this is where the fun stuff starts happening. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how we're going to get the bend on the base of our rocking chair. I've got my pieces here. Now, what I've got to do is lather these in as much glue as possible, and then you cramp them to your jig. It's going to come off of the jig bent how I want it, which gives us our rocking chair motion. It's pretty amazing, but if it's glued right, it won't ever come undone. for Kulay and she wants to be a vet when she grows up. Plus, she loves animals, so I thought, what better place to come than the zoo? Hi. Hi, how are you? Good. Good, I'm hoping to get your help and the help of these um, two lovely creatures. I'm doing a room for a little girl who wants to be a vet, but she really wants to be a vet of all animals, so I was hoping I could come here, get a couple pictures, talk to you guys about the animals. Sure. That's all right with you guys. I was up close next to an elephant, and I felt so small. This elephant is huge. It was so cool being able to be that close to these animals. You know, I got to feel the skin of a rhino, 
feel the fur on the giraffe. It really gave me the inspiration to do a little something special for Kule's room. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Here I am on the big island of Hawaii, and I'm standing on a lava field that, that's just the new Earth, Earth that wasn't here 20, 30 years ago, and, and here I am standing on it. Hawaii is a series of islands. There's no driving from one island to the other. There are airplanes that, that take you from one to the other. And um, to make this room right for Maka, I had to go to Volcanoes National Park, which is on the big island, so that's where I went. No matter where you go, there are all these different patterns here in the lava. Some are like this, and then you come over here and you get these, like someone took the sheet out and just has wrinkles in the sheet. Amazing stuff. So up until 2003, you used to be able to drive on this road. This does give me a great idea for Maka's desk. After walking on lava and seeing the way our planet is, is made, you're in awe to see this kind of thing, the power the only thing I could really give Maka was the, the experience that I shared on the Big Island being in Volcanoes National Park. Maka hasn't been able to see that yet. He's, he's never been to the Big Island, but uh, he's got a little of it in his bedroom now. Pelehol Nuemea is uh, the goddess of lava. It's, she, she is this island, and, and, and she shows herself right here. You can see why an eight-year-old is, is so enamored with something like this, because this is something I've never seen before in my life, and, and I am in awe of it. right here. This is actually where all the lava comes out. Down there where you guys are, that's where Maki in the bed is. So for this beautiful two-story entry, I think we need something pretty spectacular up here, something that really represents the islands. I found a guy. He's over on Maui. He's a glass blower. I'm thinking I'm going to head over there, and together we can create something pretty special for the family. I'm so excited because I'm here to help make a chandelier. This guy's supposed to be the best glass blower on the island. Uh, that's an interesting sign. OK. Who's a good boy? Michael. Hi, Rick. Don't worry, he's friendly. Yeah, that's what the sign says. <laughs> How are you, buddy? When I met Rick, he was so excited to help this family. I knew this guy had major talent. And I said, man, make the biggest, baddest chandelier you can. It'd be best if you maybe step back just a little so. Gladly, gladly. No. Whoa. So you better step back. <laughs> Am I in a good spot over here? Yep. So that comes out of the oven how hot? That's about 1,500 degrees right there. Ah. <laughs> can we make it where it has this? Curly things? Yeah, we'll stretch it out. It, it just takes a couple turns here. Perfect. Now I'm just going to need 199 more of those. Oh, man. Day five, we got two projects underway. As you can see, the house in the background. We've also got the community center going on over here. I'm going to try and figure out from a builder exactly where we're at. Hey, Jeff, can I talk to you for one second? You bet. Hey, buddy, how are we doing? Not too bad. Awesome. So I see the house is in pretty good shape. Now, the community center we started a little bit later with because we had to frame that out. On, how... on purpose. We started a little okay. bit later to give the guys a little bit of a rest so they could stop, take a little time, and gotcha. come over and start up again. If there's anything you need from me, let me know. You know, the thing that would, would really help is uh, probably making a, uh, a call to some of the community. 
uh, in order for us to keep on time. So anything you can do to rally a few more of the locals would be, would be great. You got it. I'll get my team on it. Thank awesome. you. Thanks. These guys have been going for three or four days straight without any sleep. And I'll be honest with you, there's only so much any human can take. We might not make our deadline. We're talking about a house in a community center. And this has all got to be done in less than two days. We could really use some reinforcements. Here's the deal. Do you guys know, uh, you know the same guys that were framing up the house are now framing up the community center, right? Yeah. The thing is, man, they're dead tired, and they're starting to slow down. I'm kind of getting nervous, and we're not going to be able to finish this thing. So I need you guys' help. See if you can't get on the news, the radio. See if we can't get more volunteers to come in, get some backup troops to pull this thing off. Right. We're kind of in a crisis situation right now. We're all working on our projects, and then you look up and think, oh my gosh, we might not have a house to put these projects in. Hey, are you guys news people? Yeah. I need to give a shout out to, the, to everyone on the island to get help here. We're, we're really behind. I need framers and drywallers and tilers and things like that. And I'm, I'm wondering if I can use your, your camera here to go ahead and do that. It is brutal. It is uh, long, long days. Uh, met a couple of guys that had been up for close to 60 hours framing. So for the first time, it looks like this is not going to happen, that we are not going to finish in seven days. We have uh, drained all of our resources. Well, day five of the Extreme Home Makeover Project, and Kalihi Valley is still buzzing with activity as construction crews and volunteers rush to meet the seven-day deadline. We need volunteers to help clean up with gloves and things like that, but mostly framers, tilers, finished carpenters, just folks who, who want to come out and give a hand. We've been doing this a long time. You would think by now we would really know whether or not we can do it in seven days. But at this point, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if we might have taken on too much. Trying to build a house and a community center in the time that we have with the labor we have and the location we have might just be impossible. I hate to say that because we always seem to pull through, but right now, I don't know how we can do that. You know, we still got a house in the community center to build. You can do more than just stand there. Thanks, Doss. <laughs> Girls, this is no time to be picking up seashells. We still got a house to build and a community center, OK? People, it's no time for scenic shots. We're not on vacation. We got to finish a house and a community center. We got one more hour of show. Don't roll the credits. We still got one more hour, a house and a community center to finish. 